So in this improper integral, notice we have from negative infinity to positive infinity. So what you're going to have to do on these problems is bust it up. I'm going to pick 0. You can break it up at any arbitrary point. x squared e to the negative x cubed. 0 is obviously, well maybe not obviously, it's a good place to break things up because when you use it in your limits of integration, usually evaluating things at 0 is pretty simple. So 0 to infinity. Remember if these overlap you get an equivalent integral. I have x squared e to the negative x cubed dx. And now you basically just turn it into two problems. I'll have the limit as t goes to infinity, excuse me, negative infinity. And I'm going to replace the negative infinity with the t, 0, x squared e to the negative x cubed dx. This one I'll have 0, and since I've already used t over here, um, we'll call it maybe v. So we'll look at the limit as v goes to positive infinity, x squared e to the negative x cubed dx. And when you have two of these, you could either work on them simultaneously. Uh, in terms of um, you know, being more efficient, I think, with your time, it's a good idea to pick one or the other. If one of these integrals turns out to be divergent, you do not have to evaluate the other one. You just conclude that the whole problem, the original integral, is divergent. So if you're doing them simultaneously, you know, you're kind of potentially wasting some time, especially on an exam. You know, if I get this one's divergent, hey, I'm done. So I'm going to pick on this guy and work on him. So if I integrate, so let's see, what's a good way to do this one? And again, I'm going to kind of think about it without the limits and all of this stuff in there. I'm going to treat it just like an indefinite integral for a second. Well, I see an x squared and an x cubed. This is going to be one of those u substitution problems. Often when you see things that are off by a degree of 1, a u substitution will usually be a good way to go. Also, almost any time you don't have just e to a plain variable, e to the x, e to the y, e to the z, whatever, if you have some more complicated stuff, that's usually going to be the way that you'll integrate it, is a u substitution, letting u equal whatever's up there. So du, I'll get negative 3x squared dx. Well, in my problem, Okay, I'm going to call the x cubed u, and then I'm left with an x squared dx. Well, I want to get just x squared dx alone here. So I'll divide by negative 3, and I'll have negative 1 third du equals x squared dx. So, kind of forgetting about this part for a second here. When I do my antiderivative, I'll get e to the u. And then the x squared dx is going to be replaced with the negative one third du. So negative one third du. And I'll end up getting negative one third. If you integrate e to the u, hey, you just get e to the u. But in this case, u is negative x to the third. So if I plug all of this stuff back in, I'll end up having the limit as t goes to infinity. And now I found my antiderivative. It's negative one third e to the negative x cubed from t to zero. So find another piece of paper here. All right, so this is now the thing that we're working on. Again, I'm just going to plug in my upper limit and my lower limit. So in this case, I'm going to be left with the limit as t goes to infinity. I'll get negative 1 third. And again, if I plug in 0, I'll get e to the 0, which is just 1, minus, I'll plug in the t. I'll have negative 1 third e 
to the negative t cubed. All right, so now, all right, we could definitely cancel out the negatives and make that a positive. Um, I'm just going to rewrite this. I've got the limit as t goes to infinity. I have one third e to the negative t cubed minus one third. So now we have to be careful here. What's going to happen? Well, in this case, and I've totally lost it, I should be really careful here. t was originally going to negative infinity, and I ended up writing infinity down here, so I've got to be careful. This should be negative infinity. So if you saw that and were cringing, sorry about that. This should be negative infinity, which means this should certainly be a negative infinity as well. Okay, so remember our order of operations. We'll take our t, and if you plug in negative infinity and qubit, well, you'll get negative infinity. Well, because of the negative that's already there, you're going to get e to the positive infinity. And again, remember the e to the x graph. As you plug in larger and larger, as things go to infinity, as the x coordinates go to infinity, e goes off to infinity. So in this case, what we're getting is one third times infinity minus a third, which is just going to be plain old infinity. So it actually turns out that this first integral is going to be divergent. So we've just worked all on this guy. We've now shown that this part is divergent. And we don't even have to worry about calculating this other part at all we can just conclude now that this original integral is also divergent. And these are the ones I like to see on a test because I don't have to do anything else over there. But if the, if the suppose we did get a number out for this part, say 1 half, well, you would do this one just like normal. But again, you've already done all the hard work. You've done the integration. You've done all of that. So you could basically jump to my step down here and you would plug in 0 to v and evaluate it. So suppose I got 1 half on this side and 1 half on this side. Well, you would add them together. You would get 1, and you would then say that this integral converges, the original integral converges to positive 1. But again, in this case, we showed that this one diverges. Don't do anything on this one. Just conclude that the whole thing is divergent.